Hey gang, this is Andy Ort, Falco K9 Academy. I'm so sorry it's been so long since our last video blog, but uh, we've uh, it's just been very hard to uh, find the time to sit down at the uh, computer and edit the videos and put them together. But uh, I came here on a Saturday morning just to get one done. Also, it's my wife's birthday. Don't tell her. <laughs> And I'm over here doing some work. Uh, actually, I let her sleep in, and uh, hopefully the kids let her sleep in too. But in any case, uh, we were on the topic of uh, uh, bite dog work and teaching the dog to out on command without going to extreme measures. Now, a few questions have come up that we've got on our videos, uh, and one of them is in regard to um, dogs that aren't outing for the toy. So if you decided uh, after watching our video you're gonna try to use a toy, and the desire for the dog to bite the equipment is so strong that the toy, when the dog normally has a strong desire to play with the toy, is not a strong enough magnet, you may have to go to some other type of piece of bite equipment uh, that kind of equals whatever it is, the, uh, the dog's level of stimulation that will allow him to uh, process and think through that if he lets go of the sleeve and the decoy, he'll be able to go for something else. Now, this can be a tug. Um, you might see in the video over here that we are able to use a tug with some handles on it. That was enough at some point to get this particular dog to release and to re-engage. Uh, if that also uses it, loses its power, you may actually have to go to a secondary decoy. Now I wanna caution you that there are some rules and some do's and don'ts uh, in regard to using a secondary decoy to teach the out. But if you're focusing on just teaching the dog the behavior to let go, it is a very good tool to teach that process, to allow the dog to understand uh, that if he releases this sleeve and this decoy, uh, especially once it's gone dead, in other words, the decoy stops fighting, he may uh, be successful in releasing and then re-engaging to start a whole new uh, fight, uh, of which this is a strong desire in protection trained dogs. Now, like I said, you want to be careful. You might want to uh, you know, come to us for some additional training or find a trainer close to you to make sure that you're not teaching the dog to bite your back up or that you're going too far in uh, some other direction that you don't want to go into. So uh, it is a method uh, and it is very effective, but there's um, a, little, a few more rules that you need to be aware of before you start doing uh, that type of training. Uh, one of the other things that came up that really wasn't necessarily associated to teaching the dog to release per se, but it is a byproduct if you're using another mesh method or a harsh method, or perhaps you're giving the leash with a back correction on the collar, in that as the handler approaches and maybe becomes within six feet of the dog, the dog lets go, or the dog begins to shy away, or the decoy can see the dog's eyeball start to look back towards the handler as the handler is approaching. What, have you, what you've done is you've created distrust in the dog. In other words, the dog is fine as long as you're at a distance. Now, this dog may respect you in a lot of other ways, but during bite work, he understands that with when, when you come in within six feet, and that's how long most leashes are, that he knows that the next thing that happens once you become, uh, come within that distance, the next thing he feels is pain or discomfort on his neck. So what he does is he doesn't trust you when you get that close. And so what you need to do is build back in trust. And, uh, and you do that by giving the dog uh, bites on a long line. And then as you're approaching, you're pulling back and setting that bite. And as you approach into that six foot uh, 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 limit, uh, you begin to tell the dog, good boy, nice dog. And then you go within that six feet and begin to pet your dog and then go back to that distance and then do that uh, you know, a few times where you come up and you pet the dog. The way that you guard yourself from causing that problem in your dog is that you don't want to uh, develop the habit that every time and the only time that you come in within that six feet, you're, the correction follows uh, that positioning. So in other words, like you see on the video, the handler goes up and he praises the dog, pets the dog, maybe leaves the dog, comes back and pets the dog, he grabs the collar, lets go of the collar. You build tolerance for your closeness. But with a dog that already has now this preconceived idea that when you come within that, that distance of him, uh, that he doesn't trust you, it's gonna take some time to build that trust back up. So be patient as you do this. Uh, you may have to give the sleeve to the dog a few times as you approach, maybe you get within uh, seven feet and you have a hold of the leash, the decoy lets go of the sleeve and you do the carry. Now there's a lot of police dog trainers, a lot of police dog handlers that don't like doing the carry because you are putting focus on the sleeve 
and I purely understand that. But when you have a dog that distrusts the handler, this may be one of the methods you use in order to get the dog to understand that when you come in, you're not always going to kick his butt for uh, not releasing in a timely manner. That maybe with, when you come in, you're going to pet him. Maybe when you come in within that five feet, six feet, you're going to give him some praise and he gets to carry the sleeve away. Uh, maybe when you come within that distance, uh, you're going to grab the collar and you're going to help him with the battle. You're going to punch out the decoy along with him and then you're going to go back to a safe, well, the perceived safe distance by the dog. And then pretty soon there's no safe distance. Every distance is safe because a dog trusts you and loves you and loves it when you come and help him out in the battle. All right, so I hope these tips help. Again, some of these are going to want to be careful and not do them without the assistance of a, uh, a professional trainer. So feel free to give us a call anytime you want at 714-990-9010 or visit our website or send us an email at service at falcocanineacademy.com. All right, again, hope these tips help. And uh, don't tell my wife I'm here on her birthday doing work. All right, talk to you later. Take care. Bye.